with your brother being in the Cape and, and your cousin being in Port Elizabeth, do you, you as a family still chat and uh, you knock ideas off one another and, and help one another? Yeah, my brother, he gives me a lot of good advice, Glenn. Um, yeah, and Sharon as well, you know, we chat quite a bit and um, try to send horses to her when we can, when we finish here. But yeah, we do ask questions amongst each other and... Um, Welcome to another edition of In The Box Seat. What do I say? It's not In The Box Seat anymore. It's the Group 1 Equus Award winning box seat. Did yeah, you know that? That's right. Yeah, Where's the trophy? I will bring it next week. Yeah, Very boy. good because it it's, a, it's a trophy for all of us. It's a team uh, and uh, yeah, I will bring it next week. Good. In fact, let me make a note of that so I can bring our trophy and we can show it to everybody um, on the show. It gives me great pleasure to welcome Nathan Cotson. Uh, I say senior trainer uh, of KwaZulu Natal because Nate, you've you've done your time, you've done your uh, years in the industry, and you're still going strong, thank God. Uh, but you've been around a long time, so you're not a young trainer that's just started out. You've been there, done that, and you're still doing it. So that's why I say senior trainer. Welcome. Not senior trainer. Yeah, Anton say? would get the needle if you call him senior oh, trainer. Well, he's he's seasoned. Seasoned. seasoned, okay, okay, so okay, well. <laughs> I call him a, a veteran jockey once, but he crept all over me. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, also I said to someone uh, the other day, I said on the, on the TV, I said, you know, it's one, of those, one or two of the senior jockeys, and, and the one or two guys got the needle. Why? I mean, they are senior, you know, you, you, they are, they've been riding their whole life. Absolutely experienced, uh, call it what you like, seasoned, experienced, uh, whatever it may be. I'm taking but, a piss, yeah. Absolutely. Now, Nate, have you only been training seven years on your own, eh? Yeah. When I say only, it feels like a lot longer. Um, it, does. It's, it certainly does, but it's, it's, been a, it's been a long, good journey, hasn't it? Yeah, it's been a good journey. I've, I've worked for a lot of good trainers. Um, yeah, I've had a good time in the game. Let's talk about uh, the journey, because I want to start with your family first. And, and I'm talking about your dad and, and your brothers. We know, for those that might not know, talk to us about your dad and, and, and the rest of your family, because that's how it all started. You know, Cotson is a huge racing family. Even touch on your cousin down in the in Port Elizabeth. Yeah, look, um, from a young age, uh, my dad was a, a jockey and a trainer one stage in, in Zambia. Uh, yeah, yeah, he trained and he rode. Um, then they stopped that and then we moved up to Bulawayo. Um, so we've all just been with horses all our lives. Some kids we've been riding. Um, cousins stayed with us. Three cousins stayed with us. Um, we all rode horses from a young age. Uh. The whole family, even the kids, nephews, nieces, everybody, there's not a Cotson out there that doesn't like a horse. Uh, is that a correct statement? I mean, the whole family just loves horses. Yeah, we're all, we all very fond of horses. And, and animals. I mean, you look at uh, your brother's farm, he's got uh, dogs, you've got dogs. I mean, it's, it's just any animal and, and, and the Cotsons just love animals. Yeah, that's and that speaks volumes, Andrew, because you know you've got to be an animal lover. You can't work well, with animals if you detest them. Most most trainers have got a menagerie somewhere, you know. Yes, dogs, yeah. cats, <laughs> dogs, cats. But before we go anywhere, yes, old man Cotson, your father. Yes, uh, you, well said. He Carry looks on. like Charles Bronson. Anybody who goes back to to the mechanic in those movies, dead ringer. Uh, he does actually. He... Okay, so he is. Uh, and he is, is still going strong and he's living in Cape Town? Yes, he lives in Cape Town. He's still going quite strong, uh, getting on with age, obviously. But um, my mom and dad are both in Cape Town at the moment. Fantastic. Okay, yeah, we often, not often, but during the season, it's nice to see Mr. Cotson Sr. out at the Never. races and, and it's fantastic. So he, that must have been something interesting. You said trained in Zambia. Yeah. Zambia. Andrew, that's... Yeah, in the old days, I mean, <laughs> Zambia... Well, you've got Gong now, I mean, still, that's still going so on, but Zambia's finished, uh, Zim is on the precipice, but I mean, it used to be a, a huge racing. Uh. Zim used to be great racing. Uh. Nathan, when, what was your first job? Uh, tell us about your, your schooling and, and did you go to the army or, or sort of, tell us about your early journey, how it started for you. Yeah, I've, uh, obviously, I've done my two years service. Um, Obviously, we started riding from the age of 10. I was riding work at Newmarket Racecourse for my dad before school in the morning. So I was down the road from school. I used to ride work first, second string, and then run off to school. So I was just always mad about horses. I got to standard eight. I was 
I said, no, I'm giving up school. My mom said, no, <laughs> you get him a trick. My dad said, no, come work with the horses. Uh, I was quickly out of school. Um, Standard 8, I pulled out. Um, yeah, my first job was uh, with Michael Lazy actually. My dad stopped him one day in the road and said, listen, I heard you're looking for a, a stable employee. He said, yes, Mr. Cotton, I am, but I'll tell you one thing. I'm not easy to work for. But that's well that's good you'll learn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of a lot of the, the, the a lot of the trainers that, that take on staff from are not you know, you think I'm just off the top of my head, Eric Sands and now the Azzies, um, uh, uh, Shane Humby I could imagine, Duncan Howells, all those guys, uh, the David Paynes and are not easy to work with and, and they were strict but uh, the, uh, look at Brett Crawford and, and, and uh, Michael Robinson went through Dennis Dryer tough men tough taskmasters professional, professional but, uh, but that's what because that, that's what you've got to be in the industry professional well, and hard working uh, listen I reckon being a trainer is one of I think it's harder than being president of this country because <laughs> if you're president of this country you just bullshit your way through it so it's not a problem but when you're a trainer you can't tell lies or anything like that because you found out and you're out yeah, 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 absolutely. So, and, and then you've got staff to look after, you've got accounts to look after, you've got owners who don't pay, you've got, it's a tough, 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 yeah, bloody it, life. It is, it, it is, it is tough. Okay, so that was, so that was your very first job, it was as a stable employee to the ASI team. Yes, to Mark. Okay, um, I'm going to jump around a bit because You've, you've had the luxury, I say luxury, it's been tough, but it's always a luxury traveling. You've been to Dubai, you've gone to Mauritius. Tell us a bit about that, and of course that was with Mark de Kock, and, and some, you've, had, you've worked with some out-and-out -out champions, there's no other. Yeah, even now I had a stint with uh, Mr. Payne, I worked for him for a while. Um, I ran his yard when he went to Cape Town, we had a good time actually there. Kevin, Kevin Shea actually organized me the job, he spoke to Mr. Payne for me. And um, yeah, after that, I, was, I worked after Mr. Payne, I left and I, uh, Mark said to me, Ma, uh, Mr. Payne emigrated. And Mark said, look, what are you going to do? I said, well, I've got to look for another job. He said, come work for me. I said, geez, only a pleasure. And um, yeah, very nice man to work for. Um, very, uh, I wouldn't say strict, but very good at what he does. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you worked with, with, with John, John Buckler, John Buckler yeah. and Slick. Yes, John Buckler, Slick, even a bit of a crayfish. Yeah, crayfish, yeah. I forgot about him. Uh, Nate, tell me, um, or tell us, a couple of the top horses that you were with. Uh, I know you can't go through them all, but just four or five to spark everyone's memory. Rahan, Rahana, that filly, I don't know if you remember. Rahana, the name was, she went overseas. Um, killed Donan, I thought it was very good. I worked with Ipi Tommy a bit, Igugu. Um, Flight Alert, I was there a bit with him as well. Oh, those were very good horses, and then obviously there's a lot of horses. Mohi that went overseas to, to Dubai and won races there. Some very good horses. Huberg. Yeah. yeah. Those are some. Top well, how long did you spend in Dubai? It was sort of oh. during a season. Yeah, it was uh, just for the Dubai G uh, World Cup. We spent ten days every time we went out. Ten days, yeah. Were you there when Shay got beat? Uh, no, it wasn't for the World Cup. It was the Super Saturday. That's what we went for. Yeah. And Liz's design, I wasn't there for that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, sure, so those, those are some top quality names. Your experience in, 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 you, in Mauritius was obviously quarantine time, or you did, did you race in Mauritius? No, I just went for holiday in Mauritius, so I was just, yeah. You must have experienced racing there, did you? Yeah, I went there to Vincent Alet. Uh, he actually gave me a good time there, showed me around, um, showed me all the yards and how it works. And okay, how's that? I mean, how's the crowds on course there, Nate? I mean, you, if you haven't been there. Well, I've been. Have you been? Twice. Okay, but I thought you don't get out. You say you just no, stay in your they, were, they were freebies, so it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, Nate, uh, yeah, the racing there is, is phenomenal and, and, and the crowds and the passion for, for the sport. Um, Dubai, what was that like? That's also another whole different... That was also very great. That was actually better than I thought the Mauritius was very good racing at just like to see those athletes in the ring and that. I mean just to get in the ring I had to lead that horse uh, I had to grab the horse on the one side to get in the ring because you know every race you could need a badge to get in there, you just don't get in. But yeah, I took the horse one day for the World Cup, I took a, uh, what was his name, uh, Maroon's horse. Uh, the one horse he had there, he ran in the World Cup, oh, the World World Cup, Cup there too. 
Uh, and they went to England, raced there. I forget his name. I name so well. We'll, well. we'll come back to his name. His name. We'll, we'll, we'll get come back to that. Yeah. Maroon owned him, man. Yeah. Dean Maroon. Dean Maroon owned him. Yeah. Oh yes. Uh, <laughs> raced in England too. White yeah, to the purple. The white was the, with, with the, the blue multi. It was plus. also um, Freaky Crailing was very worked with the horse as well. If I'm not. If I think Freaky worked there, but that time Trev was actually working for Mark. Then Freaky had gone out on his own. Okay. And um, uh, Trevor Brown was there with him, and Trev said to me, grab that side, and that's where you'll get into the ring. I was work walking behind Curlin. Curlin won the race that day. That day. She's like, what all that is. Yeah, I remember um, the, the chief staff now in, in, in England, uh, Parker, Sean Parker. Um, he was when well, his first stint when he was there, and, and he saw JPEG coming into the ring one day. And JPEG came in early and he thought, she's what a big, strong horse that's looking so good. He said, he said after all the English horses walked in, he said, Cross looked like a lead pony. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true. Jeez, like those horses are unbelievable. The, um, yeah, the, the, that, we'll get to that horse's name in a moment. Uh, we'll get to that horse's name. I know exactly the horse you're talking about, um, but we'll, <laughs> we'll come to it. The life takes its 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 toll, and and it, you go on the life journey. When you decided seven years ago that you were going to go on your own, was it an easy decision to make, or, or, or was it quite tough? Obviously, it was, it was very tough. You know, only reason why I did is Mark said, "Look, he's turning up the yard, Jay and Natal, and um, I didn't want to go to Joburg or you know, live in Joburg. I don't like staying in Joburg. So I said, "Look, I'm going to have to." do my own thing now. After working for Mark, where do you go to? I mean, you know, trainer-wise, I mean, I thought, geez, I've worked for all the trainers I can now. I've had a lot of trainers I worked for in my time. I thought, oh, you know, it's about time I just do my own thing. And Mark helped me quite a bit too, you know, gave me a lot of... You're talking about helping Mark, you know, I mean, he, he's, he's, he doesn't need any introduction, but now, to this day, I mean, with your brother being in the Cape and, and your cousin being in Port Elizabeth, do you, you as a family still chat and uh, uh, knock ideas off one another and, and help one another? Yeah, my brother, he gives me a lot of good advice, Glenn. Um, yeah, and Sharon as well, you know, we chat quite a bit and um, try to send horses to her when we can, when we finish here. But yeah, we do ask questions amongst each other and um, yeah. That was a bit of a bummer that he, but he cousin Casey arrived, eh? Sure. Cousin Casey, I've oh, found me twice. <laughs> <laughs> that's a super, well, that's a, yeah. already won awards and beautiful. That's, that's really a fantastic. But you know what, rather my brother beating me than someone else. <laughs> Nathan, let's talk about your business at the moment, Nathan Cotson Racing Stables. Very much a family run business, and, and you'll explain why that is because everyone in your family is actively involved in the stable. Yeah, it's just, it just happens like it, you know, my girls just love the horses and they love being around the horses. Natasha, she does my counts for me, um, she helps me a lot there. She could, comes to the yard whenever she can, she's just mad about horses. They all are. Your wife uh, affectionately called Ma, but everyone calls her Ma in the industry, but she also loves it. She's by your side, she's there at every race meeting and she also loves screaming them home and, and enjoying the horses. Oh yes, yeah, she definitely does. My, one of my biggest supporters, when they win, she's the first one on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> And you, you, you've certainly had some nice horses and, and, and I'm sure you've got a couple of two-year-olds or youngsters that are still to come out and it's always exciting those times because you never know what you've got. But you, you, you can be proud and I know you're a modest man and you'll, you, you're a shy man and you'll sort of want to stick to your humbleness but you've had some good winners, you've had some good horses go, you know, and, and, and just testament to your training ability. Oh, thanks. I have had some nice horses. Uh, Caden Sprite was a very nice horse. Um, I got nice money for him, so I sold him. I wish I didn't, but... <laughs> yeah, money talks. <laughs> Are you a firm believer that if the money comes for a horse, you, you know, nine times out of ten you must sell? I mean, oh, if, if, if every horse has got its price. Well, yeah, that's what they say, but um, I don't like to just... I'm thinking differently now. I don't want to just let go any time, man. I remember Mr. Rattray was saying, any horse has got its price, you give me. Yeah, he said, yeah. you, said, you can't go broke making a profit. That's what, oh, that was no, his, sure. that well, was his to, philosophy in life. Yeah, you're 100% right, but also no, no, to, you, know, you, you don't want to lose the horse that you've sort of looked after. Oh, look, I suppose if, if you 
top owner, you got a lot of horses, and you've had a lot, lot of success in the game. Those top owners, I don't think it's yeah. they should rather just keep them. You know, it's not well, a problem that's, to that's keep what them. I was yeah. Absolutely. You know, if if it's say, a business to them. Uh, can you imagine if you and I, who are are, are, are two down and outs? Okay, we're not down and outs. I'm just <laughs> just about. I'm just joking. I'm just a joke. But two very uh, uh, average Joes of the of the world. Happen to find a champion, and and you know, and they come to us and say, "Well, we want to give you uh, eight million rand for your champion." No, eight million dollars. Eight million dollars. You can take okay. it. You can take it with the bridle and the saddle. And the okay. groom. <laughs> and, 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 and ten bags of food. So yeah, I mean, obviously, because we, you know, we would be looking for the, the money, and we. No, eight million rand. I would but be a bit if, hesitant. If we were, <laughs> you know, if we were multi gazillionaires and and won ten group ones, and we were in our prime, and we yeah. were just doing, you know, then you wouldn't sell. Maybe you know, everyone's got a different opinion and different choice, but. You're right. I, I think every horse does ha does have a price. But okay, so Nate's uh, How, how's Medipus Cup? He's a champion. <laughs> I've just him. <yelled> in. <laughs> but before we talk about Medipus Cup, let's talk about your owners. And 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 you'll want to mention a couple or all of them. But in general, uh, Alderman Haswell, who's a, a man of racing. He, he he's passionate. He loves the sport. You know him very well. He's from your neck of the woods. Always comes to the races with his hat and matching his colours, and that's what we need. That's what we, the game needs: passion, love, and 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 he's obviously doing it not for any ulterior motive. Not a, yes, it's about the cash. You, any business in life, you want to invest money, you want to try and get back as much money as you can. But he's doing it because he loves it. Now, Rob, Rob's got a, a plan. He's got another plan uh, for Scottsville. He wants to turn it into. Like a, a racing festival, three or four days, tents, blokes coming along. He's just been to Saratoga, I think he's, maybe he's still sniffing glue there. So, uh, <laughs> uh, Rob, I know he's very passionate about the game and he really loves his horses there. And he's got the horse Medibus Cup. Yeah, he's, he's got, got Medibus Cup. Uh, we had a good run eh? when we first started off Chish, we never went wrong eh? we had one after winner and then <laughs> obviously... Like do you know, it goes like that. You have winner after winner, and then it goes quite. Funny enough, I'm noticing it now in in the in the in, in racing in general. You know, because we obviously follow racing every day. You know, you get stables that uh, funny Broncos. To, and I, I'm not li leaving anybody out or promoting anybody. I'm just using names, and I can't remember everybody. Funny Broncos still going through a patch where everything was winning. Alec Laird went quiet. All of a sudden, boom, 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 every winner. Uh, there's another stable, um, the yeah. Crawford girls up in Ashburton had a quiet spell. Their horses are always consistent now and in the money. So it goes like that. Dennis Bosch, Wendy Whitehead. Dennis Bosch, look at that, now. absolutely. Thank you for reminding me. I can't remember everyone's names. Wendy Whitehead going through a purple patch. Uh, Dennis Bosch was, I remember talking to Dennis on the course. He was saying, I might as well give it up. He said, I can't, I can't uh, have a place, never mind a winner. Now he's having his winners. So you're right, when you talk about uh, Alderman Haswell, you guys were firing, but I mean, the fact that you've gone a little quiet doesn't mean you're not going to fire for him again. You know, it, 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 the wheel turns. But yeah, Madiba's Cup, interesting story how you got that horse or how you named the horse. Share, share that with us, Nate. Oh, he, well, obviously, I bought him at the sales and then Rob, I said to him, Look, do you want to come in to share with us? He said, Yeah, definitely. And um, yeah, he was in. He actually bought another share again in it now. Um, but yeah, he, he, look, he's a nice horse. He's good. he's laid back and uh, he's a stayer. He's an out and out stayer. He, he ran a good. He won a maidens. Uh, I should have gelled him. I left him for another two runs, listening to jockeys. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've gelded him now. I think that's what he needed, and um, hopefully he's going to start producing. Yeah, no, he was he was named after because I think it was that a mayor green tea or something. Yeah, uh, lemon tea. Lemon, lemon tea, tea, which was with Madiba's. Favorite cup of tea. Oh well, Rob actually said, "Please, can I name this horse?" I said, "Well, ask Ashwin." So he spoke to Ashwin, and they agreed to let him name it. And that's how Madiba's cup came because of the lemon tea and what he used to drink and all that. Yeah, a beautiful story. Rob's passionate. Yeah, well, that's and he puts thought into it as well. Let's talk about the horses. Some of the horses in your yard, you look at them and they're ultra consistent. And now we're not expecting you to give away any of your secrets, but what, what, what is it, and it may be a silly question, but you know, what is it that you do to keep a horse nice and consistent? Uh, not every horse can be consistent, I understand that. But I mean, in particular, Rob's had a couple of horses that were running and earning checks just about every time. Is it just that keeping the horse happy? Is it picking your races? What is it, Nate? Well, look, you've got to keep them happy, and at the same time, you've got to know whether to 
not do too much or too little. Yeah, so it's just a fine line of overdoing them or underdoing them. So you just got to just uh, keep them ticking over when they're fit and ready. You got to just keep them ticking there. And, and, and your yard at the moment, how many of you? Go? I've got forty-one. Eh? 41. Okay, okay, that's fantastic. And obviously room to grow. I mean, if owners want to send your horses, you're available. Definitely. Um, I've actually got a few now I'm going to get rid of, so I'll be cutting back a bit. Um, yeah. That doesn't pay to keep horses that are not earning it. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. It just makes everyone, you yeah, know... Just buggers your reputation. Yeah. And, and there is a huge market out there for, for afterlife, you know, dressage and, and, and hacks and, and uh, rehabilitation. And my favourite, show jumping. Show jumping, etc. So, yeah, there is, certainly, <laughs> there is certainly a life after, after horse racing. The... Um, I've just gone blank for a second. We were talking about... Uh, yeah, the, the stable and, 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 and cutting down and, and costs. Hollywood have got involved in racing in a big way as owners, as sponsors. Hollywood bets Scottsville, Hollywood bets Gravel, and now Hollywood bets Kenilworth and Durbanville. They've just been a wonderful breath of fresh air, haven't they? Yeah, they definitely revived the game quite a bit. Um, you know, what they've done for the game is unbelievable. I was looking at the fields for Durbanville this weekend. I mean, the, Durbanville, you were lucky to get six runners. Yeah, could never fill a field. Never fill a field. No, got but what is it that they've done that they've changed? I mean, are they just... Okay, well, I suppose the stakes have gone up a bit. Uh, which, which the incentives they give. But I mean, what, what did the blokes be, before them do? I mean, there must have been a bunch of clowns. I can't comment on that. No, <laughs> 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 um, I, I love asking this question and I, and I love making the statement too because we don't want to worry about the negative. There's always going to be... 90% people positive and you'll get the 10% people that are negative, but... I'm 10%. Stop it. <laughs> the, the future of racing, I mean, uh, yes, we know any business, any industry, it's tough times, but uh, I mean, are you here for the long haul? Are, are you here to train winners? Are you here to support your owners? Are you happy with the way things are going? Yes, there's scope to improve and all the rest of it, but you happy? Are you in the 90% positive or are you in the 10% negative? Look, obviously I'm positive. I'm trying to be positive, but it's getting harder and harder to be. But so far, you know, we've got to be positive. Where are we going to go? You know, I've got to only think and think good things. But you know, people are trying to bring the game right. And uh, like you say, Hollywood's done a lot for the game. And um, we seem to be picking up and going forward a bit, eh? I, would, I would say. Well, the thing is, it's, it's hard if you're a trainer. I mean, you, you work from 5 o'clock in the morning to 6 o'clock at night, and then you've got owners bugging you at 9 o'clock at night. It's a, it's a way of life rather than a, a job. So once, if you, you, I think most trainers probably die in their stables. Yeah, you, know, you can't get out the game once you're in. It's just the passion for the game. You, it's hard to leave the game. Yeah, talking about hard to leave the game, of course, uh, with tragic news that we've received during the past week that the champion trainer of South Africa has, has left the game. And th those are things that, uh, you know, make us realise, you know, it's not always so rosy. You know, it, it's, it's stress, it's life-threatening, it's, it's the serious, serious business, this. So it's the story, eh? Sure. Absolutely, a absolutely. Now, um, Actually, three. <laughs> we're not talking about the truth. Yeah, yeah, talking about the three sides of the story. Absolutely. Your owners, good bunch of, of guys and girls, and, and they're there to support you, Nathan. They, they're there by. Yes, I've had some very good owners. There. Some very nice people. Ted Hughes, um, a Kong, very nice guy, character of note, too. Also, very passionate about the game. He's down for He doesn't want to get rid of the bad ones. He wants to keep them all the time and just keep okay. going. <laughs> but. <laughs> but yeah, he's always very um, enthusiastic and loves the game. He comes out every weekend and comes up to look at his horses, watches them work. And yeah, I have a great time with him, have a breakfast with him. And then there's Rob as well. And then there's my cousin Brandon. And then I've got a lot of other guys too. Um. Let's chat about Brandon. Uh, as I said, as I say, we, we shouldn't have to keep giving the excuse that we can't remember everyone's name. It's not malicious that we forget somebody or we can't talk about everybody. We haven't got the whole day. But you've got a whole band of happy, good, strong owners. But we're just singling out a few that we can think of off the top of our head. But your cousin Brandon, quite a few shares in horses and, and also sick for the game like we all are. 
Well, you know, he was also always into horses from a young age and uh, loved horses, but then uh, we moved up this side and then he obviously went his own way. He started to sell houses. He's now got his own business, estate business, estate agents. Um, yeah, he's got horses. He's very passionate about the game. He just, he, if he had his way, he would be uh, with me every day, but so he's got to do that? in Joburg. Oh, is he a yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, yeah. Tell me, Nathan, I mean, if you've got a lot of owners, um, how often do they actually come to your ring in, in the mornings and, and, and check? Will they just on the end of the telephone? Yeah, mainly most of the times on the telephone because some of them, a lot of them are State Joburg and oh, Cape Town. And, but Cape Town. yeah, the ones that are yellow, some of them got shares in them, the ones that have got 10% shares, and they love to come out and come have a look at their horses and enjoy it. You know, they're just passionate also about the game. And what, what, what makes the game is actually, if you've got a share in a horse, you actually go and take an interest. It's very it's nice for them to take interest. Your stint in Dubai, tell us, you would have had many happy memories and many good stories and, and many moments, but something, in, in just looking at it, your Dubai time, what would have been your, I don't expect you to tell us the whole story from beginning to end, but was there a special moment that you look back and, and you sit and you think, wow, that was special and that was nice? Just, just the whole 10 days actually you're so busy there for the 10 days you know Mark actually every day you've got something on uh, if it's a boat cruise or um, a golf. big lunch or uh, well I don't play golf but Mark obviously there we didn't play golf on enough he didn't really play much golf when I was there but um, so I just uh, oh, build up experience. to the yeah, the whole experience was just great eh? just going to the stables to see how it's running there then we went to Satish Seymour's yard and uh, geez, it's unbelievable what the, how they run the whole yard then the jacuzzis and the... You guys have top horses in your presence too so I mean yeah I mean safe to say that that whole experience would have really been put down as one of your, your highlights. Huh? It was definitely yeah, it was a really great race it was, it was just lovely to be there and um, just Mark spoiled us so he really everything was on the house um, we had big lunches and uh, all sorts of, we really had a good time. Yeah, we had that, I went to that um, desert thing, it was unbelievable, that show is, I've never seen anything like it. Fireworks and the, the food and the music and the, and the tricks they do in and just all sorts. <laughs> it's unbelievable how they... The last thing I want to touch on is, is, is a, not a sensitive subject, but I've always said, if you are a dentist, if you've got a sore tooth, you go to the dentist, you say, Doc, on the left hand side at the back, there's a problem, fix it. You pay the man or woman his money or her money, they do their job. You um, want to have a kitchen cupboards put into your house, you phone the man, you say, or woman, you say, come on, this is what I want, put the money, that's my design, crack on. Now, owner's involvement in the sport, we understand that owners own their racehorses. They, the trainer doesn't own them. Yes, trainers have shares in horses because they, they need to do everything in their power to get horses partnered. I understand that. But in general, they own the horse. It's their property. They entrust you guys and girls to do their job, to do your jobs. How receptive are you to, to having an owner getting involved? I mean, to the point, I'm, I'm giving you my opinion before you give me yours. I, I'm happy that as owners ourselves, we get involved. You're allowed an opinion, etc. But let the man or woman do their job. How, how receptive are you to owners getting involved? Well, look, obviously it's nice for the owner to be involved and care about his horse and come see it. And uh, it's very nice like that. But yeah, sometimes, you know, I just feel I should leave it to the trainer. You get one or two owners that they want certain jockeys on their horses and uh, maybe you don't get along with the jockey or you don't like the way he rides or whatever but um, suit the horse. well that's the thing you're not really get along with him as such but he doesn't get along with your horse or your type of you don't like the way he rides and you know that sometimes gets a bit difficult when the owner wants that specific jockey yeah but yes. otherwise yeah i actually quite like him to get involved and obviously like you say they must have opinion and they're entitled to their opinion they're, they're the owner of the horse and um you always listen to what they have to say and then you can always just agree or disagree after that, you know? Absolutely. No, but it's, it's for me tricky. I mean, if, if you go to a, a mechanic, you give your, your car to a mechanic and then 
you start telling him what to do. I mean, <laughs> you know, what do you employ the black for in the first place? Yeah. Well, it's, talking it's, about, it's the same yeah, thing. Absolutely. Yeah. Talking about mechanics, uh, the gentleman, uh, we, our, our fridge at home is broken, but it broke three weeks ago. So we've thrown away every week, unfortunately, food that's gone off. Uh, but you, you just reminded me about mechanics because uh, the gentleman that we've summoned to do the job clearly doesn't know how to do the job. So we maybe need to find somebody else because it's costing quite a fortune to replace food every week. But uh, yeah, so I, I agree. Uh, that's a, it's a good way of saying it. Everyone must get involved. It's their horses. But yeah, just leave the trainer to do their job. A absolutely. Nate. Um, there's not much more we can add, just uh, it's glad that we've been together and we were able to showcase your experience, albeit a very microwave version, because your, your whole life's been in racing and your whole family and, and, and we wish you all the best and, and yeah, it's, it's, it's great that you've had that experience and you've had those kind of horses with you and testament to your training ability. That's why I remember seven years ago when they said Nathan Cotson's going on his own and it's a big step, as Nathan said, you know, you, you've gone from you're paying, you get getting paid, paid a wage. Yeah, now you've got to find the wages, you know, <laughs> and you've got to deliver, and you've got to produce, and you've got to entertain owners to entertain. So it's a huge step. But uh, yeah, when I, when we heard seven years ago, Matey Cotson was going on his own. I, I didn't hesitate to think, you know, he was no doubt going to make it because of, of your ability and of your experience. And uh, it's been seven good years, and just keep firing, keep keep firing, and keep going. And it's been lovely having you on the podcast. Thanks very much. I appreciate appreciate having you on the podcast. Yeah, we'll I hope we'll drag a few more horses in for you. Oh, uh, yeah, that'll be lovely. I, 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 I'm not <laughs> finished with you yet because this man. Every, do you Nate, know? Do you know? What are you doing here? Do you know every single podcast? There's two things that happen. I don't know if you've noticed because you're getting old now and you're not noticing everything. Last week you walked out on us. That's well, how old so and that's long, that's long, how old grumpy you were. Two things happen. Colin and his Weimaraner dog walk past us, behind us, every podcast, and Terry Fripp comes and gate, gate, gate crashes. I'm a party pooper. <laughs> you wouldn't poop so much if you gave us a winner. No. So, um, you wouldn't poop so much if you lost your cat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, uh, before I'm not finished with you, I want to know where on earth did you buy that uh, Ireland shirt? I bought, Tropical Island shirt. Where did you I find that? I bought this about, I mean that about 25 years ago. Uh, yeah. From Woolworths. Sure. And then uh, uh, obviously somebody. That's when Madiba was around. That was a Madiba shirt. Okay, but that uh, I've Madiba shirts are uh, listen, much spring, nicer than that. Spring. It's spring. Okay. Oh. Yeah, yeah, well, you had more money than me. So, so what did your wife do with the rest of that material? Did she hang curtains in the kitchen with that uh, material? Use it to wash dishes. Okay. <laughs> That's a wrap from us. Nice to have Andrew with us and uh, Nathan Cotson. Thank you very much to him and his whole team and his whole family and to the whole Cotson um, dynasty. That's what it, the whole Cotson family from all over the country. We wish them well and we love following their racing. We'll see you soon. As always, where will we find you? Andrew, where will we find everybody? Not in the second box. No, on the flip side. No, we'll find you in the number one box.